Hey everybody, my name's Denise Thomas and we're here for the best hour of the day podcast where Jason and I are going to talk about everything. To include, to include our shared disdain for one Jason Ackerman. No, but this is a great episode, guys. We talk about all things coaching, coach development, building a team, communication. You're not going to want to miss this one. Um, Yeah, stay tuned. Welcome to the best hour of their day podcast with your hosts, Jason Fernandez and me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. Welcome to the best hour of your day. All right, guys, welcome back. Fern, the legend, Denise Thomas. She's here. We're here at CrossFit ASDC, right? Uh, We're in New Jersey. We just did the District 13 Affiliate Summit. Denise presented on staff development. We talked about affiliate development. Seems like a good pairing. I think so. Mine was better. Debatable. Let's debate. It was about an hour and 29 minutes too long. Well, at least it was on time. (laughs) 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 Um, no, but your, your, your official title for, so long time seminar staff member worked at CrossFit Reebok one for a long time, currently affiliated in your basement. Mm -hmm. You and Jason Ackerman are one in the same at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not good by the way. Um, but your official title for, um, the in seminar in training department or EDU, sorry, Mm -hmm. I'll get these terms right, Mm -hmm. is seminar staff manager. What does that mean? That's a good question, Jason. <laughs> what would you say that you do here? What would you say you do here? <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, no, seminar staff manager is essentially a role where I get to work on a, te- a small team where we talk about all things seminar related. So sem- okay. at level ones, level twos, um, quality of the course, we get feedback, how can we make it better, what do we need to keep doing that people like. And then there's also another layer for internally the staff and developing the staff globally through the mentor program that's Mm -hmm. led by Todd Widman. We have a seminar excellence department that's led by Chuck Carswell. And I'm what... Chuck Carswell. I've never heard of him. I know. He's not important. (laughs) It's not like he uh, single-handedly... You know, inspired got, a nation got me to where yeah. I am today <laughs> but um and then we have um operations Nadia Shatilia heads up that Ashley Totten helps out and Joe Alexander oversees the whole thing mm-hmm. and my role essentially is I'm what they called and I just learned this being the new American I am I'm a pinch hitter oh let me tell you what that means Jason. <laughs> please do we're I talking where, we're talking baseball everybody baseball pinch hitter. I go where I'm needed so if Todd needs something, I assist with him. If Chuck needs something from Seminar Excellence, I do that. Um, so I get to do a lot of different things, which is really cool. They also call that a utility player. I can put yeah. I can put them in the field anywhere. They can play all positions. That, That's you. I'm almost like a generalist. Ooh. Good segue, everybody. Yes. So, well, actually, before we go there, <clears throat> I think this is important. What's one thing you think people should know about the seminar staff, the the courses that goes on behind the scenes that people don't know. Say that question again. So what with regard to just training the seminars level one, level two, what's something that you would like people to know that you don't think they know about what goes on behind the scenes mm-hmm. with regard to that course, the content, the experience and and what you guys mm-hmm. talk about behind the scenes. Yeah. Well, we talk about things all the time. It, I mean, it never ends. And it's essentially what we do as, as coaches, right? We're constantly asking for feedback. We don't take all the feedback and then make changes. We we bring it together. We put it in a document. We see where the trends are. If there's enough trends for uh, you know enough times, we then start to consider that this might be a direction we want to go in. Um, but there's constant chit-chat about the level one, um, about the level two, and um, and then internally, the staff that's delivering that are always getting feedback on how they can be better for those courses. And it's really, it's quite simple, the stuff that, that we do. But 
the community is getting better. They're becoming more knowledgeable. They have better questions, Mm -hmm. more experience. So we have to level up as a staff. So we chat about things like that as well. But there is, there's never a day goes by that we're not thinking about the quality of the level one and the level two. I think it's really cool. And I I think people, I don't want, and I don't want that to be lost on people, the amount of thought and the amount of manpower and just discussion that goes into that course. Uh, You, how long you've been working on seminar staff? I think 12, 12 years. I was going to say 12 or 13. How many seminars? Oh, maybe like, not that, not 400, maybe like 370, 360, something like that. Okay. So like a couple less than me. I got it. Mm. Um. (laughs) Did you even, did you work? I know you were there, but. Oh, you guys didn't notice? Did you? Yeah. 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 No. I think I'm at like 200. Yeah. So good. It's a good amount. I mean, that's. It's not a little. Yeah. It's not a lot. There's people that have done 500 plus, so. Like Chuck. Like Chuck. Um. But I do want to talk about some of the stuff you talked about today. So you talked about developing a staff. You've been a part of some, you know, pretty large gyms. And, and so like Reebok One, One Nation, you've had, you know, you've had, and then you were at New England for a while. So you've, you've, you've been around. You've been in some, some really solid gyms. What's your goal when you go into a gym with regard to Denise Thomas shows up? What do you want to see as a coach? You um, in my own coaching or no in the staff? Yeah, okay, good question. I want to see. I, I want to know the why. I know that's a kind of a very cheesy you know, catchphrase now. What's your why? But it really is important because the why then will determine the level of effort you're going to put in, and um, that level of effort will be met with the results. So I want to see what their goals are, and I don't think their goals there's no right or wrong reason like some people are part-time coach some people are full-time coach but I want to know what what will what level are they willing to participate and then I want to help them develop a strategy to be the best they can with with, within the confines that they have Mm -hmm. so I'm looking for them to know their goals I'm looking for what their why is um and then I'm just looking for this level of of commitment that they're going to get out there and they for that hour Best hour of the day. Mm, they, nice plug, everybody. Mm, yeah, best hour of the day. Um, they're going to give those people everything they've got. And what I'm not looking for is the perfect the perfect coach, meaning that they just nail all the criteria and everything's met minute to minute. That would, that would be great, but that's not realistic. Right. I think the presence and attitude is really important in terms of um, letting people know that they're cared for. Um, and then I, I want to see that they're continually working on their craft, that they know where they're weak and they know where they're strong and that they just want to keep getting better. And they, they're, they're going to commit. That's really what I'm looking for is the why and their, the level of commitment. So you you are the, the lead. You're the head honcho. You own the CDP, the Coach Development Program. You've run many of those in multiple variations, you know, one day, two day, three day, five day. You... Your super skill is developing coaches. I think that's fair. Mm-hmm. And I, I would hands down give you that torch. I want to dive into that a little bit because we were just talking to, you know, David, he's across the South Brooklyn. He was, he's the district manager for 13. And he saw, he brought up something that people ask him all the time. They're just like, you know, what do you do? Like, what are your retention? And his answer was pretty simple, which is the same thing. We were just like, just run a good group class. Just run a good group class. We tell people all the time, like, your number one retention tool is run a good class. Best hour. It's not a joke. Or, like, make that your thing. That's your number one retention tool. You've coached a lot of coaches. you coach a lot of athletes. Are there some common themes that you can pick out of that with regard to, like, moving in the right direction? Like, how does somebody do that? Because this is the question we get all the time. You get it in level twos. You get it at the CDPs. You know, the CDPs are really immersive. You know, you get you get deep in some of the CDPs. There's very likely crying. There's, there's crying. Yeah, there's always crying. So elaborate on that a little bit. Like that that's your thing, and I know you're super passionate about it, but I want to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, I this the coach development program was birthed out of there being a gap between the level one and the level two, and back in 2015, 2016, we uh, we developed it, and the goal was for people to come into our gym, Reebok CrossFit One. And we would say we're trying to unmask the weaknesses that are that are hidden in the comforts of your own gym. So we take this person, they come to our gym, and they coach. And 
if you're an effective coach, you should be able to go into any gym in the world and run a good class, right? Because you're checking all the boxes. You're like, okay, how much equipment do we have? What's the size of the members? What what scaling do we have? What injuries do we have? How much time do I have? And you, the better you get, you're able to do that quicker. Um, so if you show up and now you're not in the comfort of your own gym and you're not asking those questions just because you're assuming things based being in your own gym, um, that 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 was the uncomfortable part for them. But to answer your question, we're a no, a no bullshit program. Sorry for that. Are we allowed to curse on best hour? Absolutely. Okay, great. Yeah. We're a no bullshit program. It's going to be uncomfortable. Now, well, themes that we've seen for people are that they, um, the people that come in and they have awareness of where they currently are, right. whether it be from a leadership standpoint, a coaching standpoint, a business standpoint, um, the people that thrive are the ones that have, have awareness or they don't have awareness, but when we unearth that, they're very humble and open and they're saying, yes, this is on me. What do I need to do to get better? Um, and they will. They will. You've got you've, it's a, a tagline again, but you really do have to drop the ego and look internally and think, what can I do better to make my situation better versus people that are not successful are those that, and we honestly don't have, I don't think I've ever had somebody that's ever said, um, it's not me. It's, it's someone else. Jason Ackerman. It's always him. <laughs> it's always him. That's why he's not here today. <laughs> but they, um, they, and even those that were like, oh, my coaches never listen. The members are really difficult. You just keep asking the question, why? Like, why Why are your trainers doing the thing you don't want them to do? Have you ever communicated to them that that's not okay? Have you ever told them that this is the gym we want to have or the culture we want to set? Because if you haven't, that's on you, that you are leaving it up to them to assume that they know what you want. Now, that's one part. And then the next part is that staff member then goes to the members and they deliver what they think. And before you know it, you've lost control of, of your gym. And really, you just have to center yourself back to your core principles and all that other stuff. So the people that have awareness already are very successful. The people that don't, but they're open to talking about their weaknesses are very successful. And then those that give pushback in the beginning, eventually when you ask the right questions, because that's the skill set of the CDP instructor is to not judge, but to help them find their answer to the question, have them answer their own questions. They're also great. I've really never had anyone that has left the CDP still thinking that it was other people's fault. Yeah, that's because uh, I've run, I think three or four of them. I don't know what the number is, but that, it's always uh, it's always cool to watch people go through that. And, you know, and not being necessarily being combative, but they will come in with, I don't want to say excuses, but they're excuses. Mm-hmm. They're like, well, I don't know yeah. this gym and, you know, and I don't, I don't know these athletes to which my answer is always like, it doesn't matter. It, it should not matter. And all we have to do is acknowledge that and, and figure out like, what could we figure out? What skill, what skill sets could we give you that that wouldn't matter that you wouldn't be afraid of it. Like, give me 15 random athletes, just pull them out of the parking lot. It, it'll matter. It won't matter. I'll dig in. I know what my process is. I know what I want the desired end state to be. And I know how I'm going to attack this problem. And I don't think people pay attention to the nuance quite enough with regard to that. And that's why I think like your, your skill set is like, you really dig into the details, you know, like that's, you really like turning it out on it. Like if you ever, guys, if you ever want to like just completely nerd out on lesson plans, Mm -hmm. like this is what, this is how much of a nerd Denise, like she gets fired up about that. She's excited about lesson plans. Maybe to a fault. Yeah. A little paralysis by analysis. Yeah. But it's important, Mm -hmm. right? You know, like some of the things we talked about, like some of the things you talked about, the devil is in the details. And you don't need to go all the way into the details, but you need to be, what I like to tell people is like, you need to be capable of doing so. Whether you choose to do so or not, is kind of up to you. It depends on the, the, the context of the scenario, but um, you have to be able to do that. You have to be willing to do that in order to progress as a coach or as a leader. You know, you know, one thing I would, I would commend you on is like your ability to have tough conversations. You know, you and I have, you've given me, I don't know, lots of feedback over the years about that. It hasn't always been good never been bad bad but at the same mm. point it's just like oh, oh yeah you're right that's right one time it was really bad um but i think that's do you find that to be a struggle as a female to give hard feedback mm-hmm. that's a, honestly a really good question because i want to say no but there has been instances where i have struggled 
um and after I was like I was ashamed of how I approached it but I've also found that the times where I I have struggled and not done my job because that's essentially what I when I don't have that hard conversation I'm not doing my job I failed that person right what is it um kind is being clear and being unkind is unclear Brene Brown come on oh, okay. Brene Brown okay. clear is kind unclear is unkind because if you're not clear and you're just kind of stroking egos or whatever you're not doing your job and that's ultimately what I think and I've gone back and reflected and been like why didn't I say that why didn't I do that and it's usually for a couple of reasons one is I just wasn't prepared to deliver it the way I wanted to so I backed off um and the other might be that um I was a little intimidated maybe I wanted that person to still like me or you know because we all have that Mm -hmm. it's it shows its its head in in different places but there could be a bunch of reasons but I always find that the struggles are where I get better like I go back and I think hard about why I didn't do that thing and I make sure next time I'm in that position I don't shy away and I know exactly what I'm gonna do as a female um I would say I don't think it's a female thing I think it's just a human being thing it's this this um ability to want to be liked or to be um respected but honestly people respect you more when you give them those hard conversations um do you think that's harder for females because i I'll, I'll, i'm definitely not a female but i i, f- I feel like that's not what i've either seen or heard expressed to me like that the, that a lot of females in this space like it can be hard as a female coach to coach males I'm not saying it's right or wrong it's just a thing um do you not think that's the case? You think it's has nothing to do with male female interaction? I don't. I think it has more to do with confidence and experience and knowing your craft. Because I do know. I and again, I don't think it was a female thing. But there's things out there like males seem to have more confidence than females generally. I don't know, genetically. I don't know. But for me, the more confident I got, the more experience I got, and the more um, knowledge that I gained, I felt like I had a stake in the game. Mm-hmm. And I knew what I was talking. I was confident. I was, um, I, I was credible. And as I've grown in it, I've, I've taken that on. But there will be situations where I'm not confident, or I don't, I can't go those layers deeper. And then I will struggle because I'm, I feel vulnerable. Mm. Right. So I don't think it's a female thing. I, I think it's a confidence and experience thing for me, at mm. least. Um, and, and. Um, but I have heard that females do struggle with males. So I can't speak to, to that for them. But for me, I don't think it was. I've seen it. And in the instances of when I've personally seen it, I don't even think it was the coach's fault. I think it was the, the athlete's fault, you know, for whatever reason. You know, it's just like, and I've had to do that maybe once or twice. But I've had to tell my athlete, don't ever do that again. Um, but there was ways that we could have avoided it. Mm-hmm. And I think it goes to what you would address is like, and this, this is with all coaches, they didn't know their shit. It was like, hey, we could have avoided that had we approached this a little differently, had you set it differently, had you set it up and teed it up differently, you would have avoided all of these problems. And there's also, I mean, <clears throat> when you say, what do I want to see as a coach? I, I can tell you what I want to do as a coach when I, when I come to a class. Because we, we hear all the time, well, it's not my class or um, I don't coach them that much. And I'm like, well, that's great, but... Today you are coaching that class and it's Jason's class. What are Jason's standards as a coach? Because right? that's what's going to happen in this class. Mm-hmm. So, you you know, female, male, whatever, you get up there and you say, all right, guys, welcome to the best hour of your day. It's 4.30 p.m. And we're going to have a kick-ass workout. And here's some rules. And then you give your rules, right? We, what, would be a De- what would be a Denise Thomas rule? A Denise Thomas rule is full range of motion, pain-free. I'm out. Yeah, you, you're screwed. <laughs> you're screwed. But um, be um, socially aware and caring for others. Like put up, you know, put others first. Mm-hmm. Um, bring it in when I say bring it in. Eyes on me when I say eyes on me. And if I come up to you at any point and I give you a coaching cue, or I ask you to modify the workout, no matter where we are in the class, from the general warm up to the bang middle of the workout, um, it's not a negotiation. Is, you know, it's, we're not going to negotiate and here's why you can't feel and see what you're doing and I can and that's my job to do that for you 
um, we can have a chit chat. And if you can, it it can be a negotiation. Like if you rationalize to me why, and there's something you've not shared with me when I asked for injuries and things, then okay, we can talk about it. But trust me when I'm giving you something, I have your best interest at heart and, and that's it. And you would tell people that the front of class? Yeah. Do you do that every class? No, no. Obviously, I you wouldn't have to. I the the yeah. classes you know really well, but if you walked into a new class, you would mm-hmm. lead with that. I leave. I, I lead with, "Hey guys, I don't know. I don't know you all, um, but please know I'm here. I'm here to help and, and you know get you results. Here are a couple of rules. I say bring it in. It means actually physically come on in. I've got something really important for you. If I say eyes on me, you can stay where you are, but I need you to listen. Um, and we're mm-hmm. going to try and adhere to range, full range of motion, pain free." I'm going to give you focus points so you don't have too much to think about. And uh, you got to be good people. you got to be good humans. I'm going to come and coach you. Exactly what I just said. I'm going to come coach you and you might not agree, but trust me, I'm here to help. And then I right. look at them. I'm right. And I'll go, you look like yes, that. yes, look right here. All right. We all made an, <laughs> a, an awkward ver- eye contact agreement and, and it's, I have fun with it. I'm not like this. Yeah. Boom, boom. It's it literally the the best hour of the day. They all day long, they're getting nagged from left, right and center. I don't want it to be militant, right. but you got to set some ground rules. You uh, know? I've actually never thought of it that way, but I, that's an, um, I've said it differently, which is there's a series of things that you would put in front of, you know, insert your scenario that went wrong inside the class. And it's always, my question is always what happened prior to that, that, that could have prevented it. And I quite literally have never thought about that. Just stating the ground rules. Thank Thank you. you. Uh, I would like to sign up for the CDP if you could help me. The, but I, but that's a, that's a good point. Just quite literally tell them what the rules are. Like be, like be overt about it. Guys, here's the deal. Here's how this is going to work. I think that would solve a lot of problems in the affiliate. And you don't have to verbally say it every time. I mean. Not every time, but I mean, if you're, if you're new and you're, and you're establishing, you know, rapport with people, just be upfront about, Hey guys, like this is my style because this, that kind of speaks to who, what kind of coach you are and how you're going to interact with mm-hmm. people. And it kind of preempts the, the scenario in which like, Hey Bob, like I'm going to come talk to you about your movement. I don't know what it is yet, but like bank on it that we're going to have a conversation about. And you might have that one person in there that is the you know, the one that's right. always going to be the problem. Eeyore, yeah. And now it's like, you know, big dog, little dog socialization. It's like, well, everyone else is following Denise's rules. Right. I'm probably going to do it too. And if not, you know, we have a conversation about that. But right. just this like subliminally, you're, you're telling people that are those people, that's not okay here. Yeah. And it's, you know, this is a bit of a segue, but the difficult member thing can be, can be like taken away. It's really simple starts at onboarding i mean as soon as an, someone comes in everybody I, pay I've, attention to what I've is been, being said right now this is a goal yeah i've been preaching that i'm on a bit of a like a high horse on this one but we say we say so much when people come into a gym we talk about a lot of stuff but what do they really want to know they want to know what your culture is what they're going to be offered you know obviously pricing and things like that but before we get into any kind of on ramp foundations, whatever, be like, hey, I just want to be honest with you. This is what we do at my gym, right? We're a CrossFit gym and we are different to maybe other fitness communities because we have a structure from zero to 60 and how we, we take you through this fitness journey. And it starts with a whiteboard introduction. And every single day, we're going to tell you what the workout is, we're going to tell you what the expectation is. We're going to give you some scaling options. We're also going to ask you for injuries at some point. And then we're going to tell you what's happening next. That's a template. Like every day we're going to tell you that. So you might look at the workout of the day on your website the night before and be like, I, heck no, I can't do that. Oh, don't worry, because you're going to come and we're going to give you this flow every time. Then we have something called a general warm up. And that's just an opportunity for us to chit chat, get you loose with your macro joints and muscles, you know, jumping jacks. <laughs> Awkwardly, crushed yes, awkwardly. <laughs> um, and then we're going to move into what we call a specific portion. Now, here's where we instruct a lot. So you're going to hold positions overhead, the bottom of the squat. You're going to get cues. We're going to use your name, like Jason, push your knees out. Give me a little more. Lift your chest. Let's get some weight. Okay, we're going to load you up. And in that specific warm up, we're not only assessing your movement and uh, and correcting you. We're also looking to see what your capacity is for the workout and. If you've, you know, been coaching a long time, you know all this, but 
when you're giving this stuff to a new person, they don't know that. All they think is they're going to get a kick-ass workout and they're going to move for 20, 30 minutes. Um, and that's that. Then we do a little you know, pee break. We do the workout. And guess what's going to happen in the workout? We're going to coach a lot. In fact, we're going to coach so much that you think you're being called out more than anybody else. But I'd like you then to go to all the other members in the gym and say, Did, was knees on your ass the whole class? And hopefully they'll say yes. Because if they don't, I didn't do my job. Um, and we, you know, we blend that in with, with acknowledgement of improvement. We, we do a little cheerleading, right? At the appropriate times. And then we do a cool down. Um, we all get together, we do a little stretch, we share st- scores and we put our scores on the board and it doesn't matter what anyone else gets, whether you're scaling it, you're doing it as prescribed. I'm going to yell your name and we're like, Hey Jay, what was your score? 29, 13. Hey Marcus, what was your score? 34 ball. I'm like, Oh, Marcus really screwed that one up today. Didn't we? We're going to have fun. Missed it. Yeah. That's on me, not you, but Hey, did you scale it? Not. Yeah. What did you scale? If you scale more than two things, I'm just going to put an S cause I can't write a dissertation up here. For what you did. But all these things could be perceived as negative. They're not negative. It's, it's what we do. We're holding people accountable to showing up and having no ego and being vulnerable to have top scores, low scores, middle scores, modifying movements, not, doesn't matter. Now, that's what we do every single day. So the question I ask to you now is, do you think this is for you? And maybe you don't know, so we can go through a little trial. Um, and maybe you're like, hell no. I just want to come here. I don't want to be bothered. I want to put my earphones in and I want to sweat. Okay, well, that's not what we do here, but I can help you out. I know a bunch of different places that would gladly take you. And if you decide you want to come back here and try it again, we're ready for you. Now, members can't complain because you've laid it out to them. And I went an expedited version through it, but I don't know if that conversation ever happens about the fact that we're technicians and we're technique people that then slam people with relative intensity and I say that in the, the best possible way slam people with intensity so we get results but those results are relative you know that, that intensity is relative it's um everyone's doing something different as long as you do your thing you're going to be great so now you have the difficult members like you guys do blah 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 I'm like we told you what we do well I think you have the difficult members if you skip that portion exactly. and that's and that's the and that's the the tough conversation with a member and, and one of the key pieces about bringing anybody into the affiliate is assimilation, integration, whatever the term you want to use, but they need to integrate here. This is our house. This is how we do things. It's like you played, you know, soccer, football, depending on where you're at. I played basketball. Well, if you get a new player on the team, well, that new player needs to fit into the team. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it, the team falls apart. And it's no different in the affiliate. Like, you have to protect that, and you have to find out – why people are there and you have to let the people know like here's how this works <clears throat> and i think i i used to have all the 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 problem athletes back in the day mm-hmm. and people ask me now i'm like i don't now but it's because we're clear about what it is that we do now and we tell them straight up you know open gym would be it would be one you know people ask do you guys have open gym and i'm like we do have open gym and i'll be very upfront with them and i'm like if all you want is open gym this is not the place for you because you're going to overpay for open gym. I've got all the things you want, but that's not what we do here. We want you to be in the classes. If you're just looking to do your own thing, I would prefer that you save your money and then just go down the street and do something else. I'm happy to have you, but I'm going to be very upfront about that. Like I'm not interested in a bunch of people that aren't willing and, and able to be part of the community. That's not what I'm doing. I don't want people that are coach. I want people that are coachable and, going back to like messing it up and like knowing your shit, you had to go through that evolution of getting it wrong and, and realizing what the repercussions of not doing that are as, as uncomfortable as it might be to have that conversation. It's way less uncomfortable to do that than to have to fire them because they don't follow any of the rules mm-hmm. and they create a huge problem in the facility. And that starts with one person, then it's two people and then it's three. And then they're like, all these people want to leave because we don't, because they're unhappy. And I'm like, they're unhappy because you didn't set the standard on the front end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that <clears throat> that conversation has to keep happening from owner to staff because a lot of the times the staff are the ones, right, doing the thing. 
But if they're unclear about what it means to have open gym and what's acceptable and what's not. Yeah, what are the rules? What are the rules? I, rules are great. They're, they're there to keep the message clear. And that's it. And if the leadership is lost and the the mission or the vision and whatever else corporate, you know, stuff we want to talk about, right. if that's not there, how can we expect our team to go out and do the thing that you that, that you want them to do? Um so I, you know, it, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to hear. But I, I said it in the in the lecture was if you win, it's a team thing. We won, we're doing great. If things are going wrong, it's a you thing, as a leader. And that's hard because you can be like, well, I said we do it, we're doing it X, Y, and Z, and they didn't do it. Okay, so let's unpack that. Why? Why? Hey guys, Nicole Christensen here with Dave Kalina, founder of O2. So I own Crossfit Roots in Boulder, Colorado, and over the years we've had a vetting process for anything that we're gonna carry in our store. And, and really our guiding principle has been, I never wanted any of our members to have to say no to something every day that they walked by. They have to resist the urge for like, I'm carrying a paleo brownie or something like that. So there were things that we were just never gonna carry. Like we we're never gonna carry monster energy and have people say no to that every time. But O2 is definitely different. So one of the th reasons is that it's it's a pure drink. It's, it's natural, it doesn't have sugar, very one gram of sugar. So Dave, talk to us a little bit about O2. That was great. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then also about the deal with Best Hour. Yeah, so, so the easiest way to think about O2 is a cleaner, healthier sports drink. Yes. And so, like Nicole said, it's only got one gram of sugar per can, uh, 15 calories total, and no artificial ingredients. So there's nothing you can't pronounce on the side of the label. Um, everything's non-GMO approved, which we're really proud of. And it's in a can because single-use plastic sucks. And so that's O2 in a nutshell. It's also twice as efficacious as Gatorade. So we have twice the electrolytes as Gatorade, mm. but again, only one gram of sugar. So better for you, healthier, and I know I'm biased, but I think it tastes awesome. So too. you can have electrolytes without sugar. Totally. Shocking. Totally. Shocking. Imagine that, <laughs> right? <laughs> Check it out, guys. Why? Well, what what was X Y Z? Was it communicated? What why was exactly, and how we were going to do it? Um, did we have a discussion about it? Was there some back and forth? What, did you make this? Is everybody clear on what X Y and Z is? Good. We we can go out there and, and deliver this, and that's the hard part of the leadership, right? Is is making sure your message is is given to the, the staff and then the members. And I just had a conversation the other day about someone like, what do you do when someone's doing open gym like they're in the class they, they're joining the class but then they see the workout and they don't like it and then they start doing their own thing in the corner and I, you know my initial thoughts were like well that member's an a-hole <laughs> right that's initially what i thought and then i'm like hold on a second bob's what, fired what would mature denise <laughs> think and i'm like you yeah. get over here you're an a-hole <laughs> no and i'm like well it seems to me that maybe something's not that individual and it's likely not the first time they've done it it's not their fault it's not their fault it's not their fault it's you didn't tell them what the rules were yeah i mean yeah it's not it we always have to come back to like where the root cause of the problem is same with movement you want me to squat below parallel and you're saying get low but my feet are under my hips and not at shoulder width. is that not where they go that's like kind of like when your heels are touching. Like heels touching? Yeah, that's it. Tiny dancer yeah, stance? Lower, Got it. Get lower. <laughs> Got it. You can say get lower all day long, but you're missing. Hey, chest up. Chest up. I don't think it's going to work. This one? <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. Uh, um, no. And it's the same with any kind of, you know, toxicity in the gym. It's like, well, what's the root cause? And maybe the root cause is leadership. There's times when it's not, but you've got to ask the question. Yeah, but those are easy to solve, right? It's very obvious when that's the case. It's that one. Those are glaring. The, the other ones when, you know, I've had this conversation with probably like three or four times in the last two weeks with a, with an affiliate owner. And there was a problem that came up with a staff member and they're like, we told them. And I'm like, tell me what you told them. And they're like, well, I told them, I'm like, does that sound super clear? And I'm like, we have to like, why did they think that was 
the, the allowed or that was the case. And they're like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, they probably didn't know either. We have to have that conversation. And because we didn't do it the first time, now it's really weird when we have to circle back and we either have to tell them they can't do that thing or that was wrong and they're going to feel bad. And I'm like, but that's your fault. Mm-hmm. And it's, and it's okay, but we have to acknowledge like that was poor communication on your fault. Like we have to address that and we have to sit them down and we have to say, listen, my bad. You did that because I clearly did not convey what the rule was. Mm -hmm. So going forward, here's that. Do you understand? You know, and I can think of most of the problems that I've had inside the affiliate were because of lack of communication where like it was not clear. I always make the joke and I'm like, if, if you don't tell people that they cannot steal from the affiliate, you can't be mad if they steal things. You can't assume that they don't think that that's wrong. Right. Like it, 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 it sounds silly, but I'm like, listen, if you guys steal, you'll, I'll fire you. Mm-hmm. Right. And they're like, you have to tell people that I'm like, well, I don't necessarily have to, but I don't want them to steal. They don't have to fire it's them. Like, it's like telling people how to <clears throat> bail the barbell. Right. Like, All these people have been doing it for years. They know what to do. Yeah. And just get rid of the barbell off your back. And you're like, you're like, just like what? what do you mean? Yeah. They know. I'm right. like, no, they come to your class for an hour a day and they, they do it, but they need reminding. I mean, where have, where have they just come from? Right. A boss yelling at them or maybe, a, you know, a kid that threw up in the, <laughs> Nanos, I don't know. Reebok plug. I got you. Um, no ball. <laughs> yeah, no ball. Oh, there you no, go. No, no, no. <laughs> um, but um, what's, the, what's the solution? And for me, I think it's having them accept what you've said. Mm. Is what I'm, say it back to me. It's like the level right. two, right? It's like, right. hey, here's your feedback. Say it back to me. Right. And they say it. I mean, like, no, no, that's not. What was your takeaway? That's and not like, don't carry the PVC. I'm like, damn it. Yes. <laughs> no, that's not what I wanted yeah, to take away. No. Me. And it's like, <clears> say <throat> it back to me. I just, you know, you're not condescending. You're just like, I want to know that I was heard and that you accepted it right. and that we can move forward. We're on the same clear. page. Yeah. We, when we have this conversation again, if we have it, that we both recognize that we had this conversation prior sign to. Sign right here. Right. No, I mean, really though, like not necessarily sign, but like we're on the same page. We understand that this means this. And that's what that means moving forward. And I think that's hard. Um, you do a good job of that. I mean, I can think of like a lot of times where simple things like um, in seminar settings where you will send out, you know, pretty lengthy emails pr- prior to the seminar about like what the expectation is, when we're going to be, which we all know, by the way, you don't have to tell us what the schedule is. We know what the schedule is, but like you send it out and you're like, we're doing this and here's what we're going to do. And if you have any issues, here's what's going to happen. You're going to take that. But we've already seen the schedule. We know it's that, but you're like, you're touching it again to let us know what the expectation is and what the rules are. And I think we overlook as leaders that just because people know what the rules are, doesn't mean that you shouldn't reinforce the rules. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the, the level one, level two, <clears throat> seminar is a great example of that. It's, you know, our team, like you said, they know the schedule, they get it ahead of time, but there's transitions in there and there's things that are not sad and not, we, we, if I assume, right, if we go from um, the technique lecture into pull-ups, right? Right. If I assume that I, I know where you want to position your whiteboard, are we going to have a, a break? Um, where do you want your people? Um, and then you're just like this, probably, right? Because right. I mean, That's the way I spend most of my time. days. And I'm like, all right, guys, mine is. technique, great. Okay, we're going to move on. Jay, where do you want everybody? And you're like, I don't know. What do you want them? I mean, that, that can happen. and it's- that, Well, that can happen even with high performers, right? So in that scenario, like how many times have you and I worked a seminar where we, at the end of one of those breakouts are like, we should have discussed that even more. And mm-hmm. it's not a big thing, but it doesn't need to be a big thing. But whose fault is that? Right. No, I'm asking you. Well, it could be both faults, right? It depends on if here's a, in a perfect world, both parties would take ownership, right? You but, would be like, hey, I should have told you and I should have taken ownership and I should have told who's you. Who's the leader? Well, you are in that scenario. So whose fault is it? It's your fault. Right. And that's the ownership. Oh, good. Of, so it's, definitely it's not, not your my fault. fault yeah. I, you know, just for the record, it's usually Jay's fault. Yeah. But in this instance, it was mine. But that's my fault. Right. You've done over 200 seminars. You're a phenomenal um, co- coach of coaches. You run a successful affiliate. You've got an amazing, um, you know, more than a side hustle now. It's doing great. But you're a very capable human being. You know what I want you to do. But if you do it wrong... It's on me. And, and it's on, and having this conversation more often, like, so the, and I, this goes back to the revisiting the standards because some people would see that, but like, Hey, I know what I'm doing. You're micromanaging, right? Micromanaging me. And I'm like, no, no, no. We're making sure that it goes well. Mm. Cause a lot of times you will have high performers that will just forget or they'll get not necessarily lazy. They'll get lackadaisical and they'll overlook it. Like, well, I'm good. I we can just do it. I'm like, that doesn't mean it's okay. 
doesn't mean it's okay. Like we still want to do the basics really, really well, which is like, what's the plan? Where is everybody going? Yes, we can all react to that and we can fix it on the fly. We don't need to do that. Like why? And what? And <clears throat> what's the problem there? When when a, when a trainer says to you or someone in a subordinate says to you, I know what I'm doing. Why are you micromanaging me? What is the issue there? Well, it's uh, it's a trust issue, number one, but it's also lack of communication, which is like mm-hmm. you could have said, I'm going to want that prior to you going out onto the floor and executing that. Like, you need to send me that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, but also, if you come up to me and you're like, Denise, I need you to tell me what you're doing today for the workout. And I come at you with like, okay, we're going to do, you know, run 800 meters. Mm-hmm. We're going to do, you know, the med ball cleans, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, okay, but what about if um, it rains? And then I'm like, Jay, I know what I'm doing. Why can't you just get off my back? You're micromanaging me. Ego. Right. You're not micromanaging me. You want to know my plan. Why? Not because you're checking things off, but you want to make sure that this gets done very well. Right. Because it's not about me and it's not about you. It's, it's about, about the experience. them. So seminars, seminars, classes, whatever, insert X, when somebody is checking up, it's not about the that they don't trust you. It's about the communication that we you know what I'm doing, I know what you're doing, and that thing is going to be excellent for them. It's all about them, mm-hmm. all the time. And I think coaches that get upset about being assessed or given feedback, they're making it about them. And it can happen. We're not saying that, you know, we've all been green-eyed monsters at times, and, you know, we want to have the best classes and whatever, but you've got, we're in a, we're in a, a, a we're in a, um, the business of service to others, building relationships, and, the minute we put us at the front of that, we, we completely lose sight of what we're doing. And no one I know that put, that leads through service has ego in that way. It's hard to do. It's really hard, yeah. You're probably not very good at it. Or you're doing it by yourself. Mm-hmm. Those people are, they're, yeah. they're lone wolves. I'll just do it. There's, yeah, I'll there's, well, it. There, yeah. you have a, your team sucks or the, or that is the limiting factor for you to make it to the next level of whatever you're trying to achieve because you end up having to go it alone because nobody wants to follow you. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's a problem. And recognizing that is like, listen, you're not going to, I don't care what variation of this you're doing. You're not doing it by yourself. Mm -hmm. And people, you might not fully agree with what I'm doing. You might do it a different way, but if you're my leader and the way I'm doing it is okay, but you know a better way for you to tell me, Hey, that's good, but do it this way instead. You've just minimized a huge learning opportunity for me. Let me find out mm-hmm. under your guidance that they might have been a better way. That's how we grow. Hey, hey, Denise, what do you think about that? Well, I really think I should have done blah, 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 blah. And in your mind, you're like, that's what I probably would have done. Mm-hmm. And you're like, that's a really great idea. Let's do that next time without you saying, well, I would have done it this way. Right. So, Because like, that's about you. Exactly. Right. But you want them there's, there's times to right. tell them no. Absolutely. There's <laughs> times know, where like, they're like under no circumstances. Yeah, you can do that that. Is, thank you, but no. Uh, but you've got to dig. You've got to be like, is this that time? And a lot of the times it's not. A lot of the times it's, I'm going to let them roll with this. I'm going to write some feedback down. I'm going to ask them what they would have done differently. And if our two things match up, boom, this person has awareness. That's fantastic. I'm going to commend them on that because I'm going to show them that's exactly what I have. Great job, you know. Having them find the answer for themselves is way more valuable and impactful than you feeding them this stuff, unless it's really needed. Well, but it's also, it allows them to be part of the process, right? So like, this is something I learned from Chuck a long time ago, which is in the level two setting, I'll typically always ask, as soon as they run whatever drill is, how do you feel about it? If you, if I, if I gave you the reins and you ran it again right now, immediately back again, what would you change? I'm like, well, I would have changed this. And I'm like, I agree. Let's talk about it. Because I want to know where they're at on that spectrum. I want to know like how they viewed it. Is it accurate? Are we way off? And a lot of times, they'll be overly critical on things that aren't necessarily that important at that time or in that mm-hmm. in that context. I'm like, oh, I think I was talking too fast. I'm like, I didn't think it was too fast. I thought it was fine. Now let's talk about this. And they're like, oh, I thought I was talking fast. I'm like, mm, nope. I mean, it, it wasn't mm. awkward. And they write all those things down. <clears throat> let's say they have a list of five. They're like, all right, Jason, you've ri- you've wrote, written down here. <laughs> I talked too fast. I went a little long on my general warm up. Um, I missed scaling this new person. Um, I didn't uh, start, you know, 
have the right songs, whatever. Right. Be like, okay, we've got a list of five. Really good assessment. Pick the one that is the most important. And if they're like, I should have played better songs, I'd be like, hell yeah, DJ first, Ackerman. <laughs> and I was like, you're not a DJ? I'm like, I'm a DJ. <laughs> now, I'd be like, okay, well, yeah, maybe the song's important, but is there something in here that's more important? And eventually, through process of elimination, they get to, I should have scaled the new person. Right. And, the, and then you have a conversation about like, so why, in your mind, like, why was the song the thing? And and then they're like, oh my gosh, there's like this whole process that you're talking about is going on. And so I think feedback always needs to happen. It needs to happen soon after the event. Immediately, preferably. Yeah. Unless that person is just hot. You don't want to give someone feedback when they're coming off hot off a of class. That's, I'm going to give you 10 minutes, then we're going to meet in the back, you know, yeah. versus like three, two, one time, everyone, boom, boom, boom. Okay, high fives. All right, come in. I've got some feedback. They're going to yeah, be like, like okay, yeah. I'm not ready to yeah. consume this. Um, I lost my train of thought. But Just feedback, giving it. Giving feedback, but they, um, yeah, I, I I think that they can just start to learn the journey them, themselves. I, I lost what I was saying. But we, were just, we were talking about like, making sure that they understand and you can unpack like what they viewed and, and making sure they understand the feedback, but also what was their own critical feedback of that so that they can start to self-assess more effectively. Cause I think that's one of the things that I think over time, if you, if you really want to be good at this is like, can your self-assessment be as accurate as the person who's watching you, who has a completely objective view and you can walk off the floor and I'm like, boom, boom, boom. And they're like, yep, you got it. And I'm like, cool. We don't, we don't really need to talk about that then. Like if you're, if, if your self-assessment is accurate and you know why those happen, that's, that's about as far as that conversation needs mm -hmm. to go. And I'm like, you, okay, you understand why and how fix it moving forward. Next that, time. that question of why I think is such a money, money question because there's not a lot, like we say this all, there's not a lot of absolutes in what we do. There's definitely some directives, but if you're like, Hey, why did you decide to do 15 minutes here when we needed blah, blah, blah? And they're like, well, it was Thursday and people were sore. And, you know, I checked in during, you know, the intro. And I knew this class was a little more advanced. In, in it was the 6 a.m. versus the 9 yeah. a.m. or whatever. Like, oh, that's a really good rationale. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, I'm good with it. Versus you should have done 10 minutes on your general warm up. Like, just because. Just because. Why? Right. Because you know. Let's have a have a discussion. And that doesn't. And and even the reasoning might not be necessarily justification. Meaning, like you could have done it for a good reason and had a poor outcome, mm -hmm. which is not the point, right? The point is like you had a reason. You were trying to put some some logic behind it. It just the outcome wasn't what you wanted. Okay, cool. So how do we reverse engineer that and use that but get a better outcome? Like I still want you to do that. I still want you to think about that. I still want you to apply context. I still want you to be a thinker, but I still, we still, we're not going to, the outcome was, was poor, mm. right? Look, whatever it might be, either it was late, maybe ran three minutes over or 30 minutes over on your workout. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> well, 18, if you count the 45. Minutes. Um, but stuff like that, which is just being okay with understanding like, Hey, all the reasons in the world are fine, but the outcome is what matters. And you can have perfectly good intentions, but if the outcome was poor, that doesn't mean it was right. Mm -hmm. And we could, how could we apply them better moving forward? Um, and I think that's important, right? You want, you want coaches that are thinkers. This is why I have a little bit of contention with just taking programming and lesson planning and following it blindly. I have, a, I do have a little bit of a problem with that. Like you're not a thinker at that point. What of that lesson plan should we remove due to any number of constraints, space, equipment, athlete restrictions, weather, whatever it be, you should take it and you should apply that. You shouldn't just walk out and be like, I've got the lesson plan. We're going to execute it. And I'm like, there's a tornado outside. Mm -hmm. Like, well, maybe we shouldn't do that. That's what we want them to be. And that's why I give, I like to give our coaches a lot of leeway there. Here's what I want. I want a good outcome in the class, meaning like you need to start on time. You need to finish on time. You need to interact with people. You need to do some actual seeing and correcting and make people move better. There should be some laughter in here. Check all the boxes, general warm -up, specific warm up, cool down. Cool. Do that. There's a lot of ways to do that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ways to do it really effectively. I'm not interested in the way I'm interested in a really good class. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that in a way that's slightly unique to you, even better. And there's, there's different stages of a coach as to when right. you do that, right? Like the beginning coach, you, well, you know what? I actually, I, I take that back. 
I go back and forth. You've got two options, right? You follow the lesson, but hey, I would like you to do this. There's time and a place for both. Right. And then, but I also want you to write your own. Yes. Because I, of all the great coaches that I see in the CrossFit space right now, there was no lesson, lesson planning template back then. We just figured out what the needs of, of the, each class was where, you know, it's 8 a.m. is different to 4 p.m. And they, they built it out. And it, it, there's that critical thinking. The brain is a muscle. Like it, it grows, it gets stronger when we, we have these, uh, go through these processes. But like to your point, if you're just following something, you don't get that. Now, if you don't have the capacity to put something together, that's different. That's different. Let's follow this for now, but you and I are going to spend time. And this is where Yeah, like scheduling. why can't we do this? Like what's yeah. what's the hiccup? Is it a is it a group management issue? Is it you struggle to see and, and and what is the root cause of that? Meaning like you're just standing in the wrong place or you're trying to see too much or you're going too fast, like and whatever. They just don't know how to write right. the plan, right? They don't when we go to the specific warm up, they're like how do you even get to that? Right. Is that a conversation we ever have with people? Or would you just assume that they know, yeah, we're going to do a clean and we're going to do these progressions. And we're like, okay, why are well, you doing that? Why are you doing that? You know? And, um, I think just having education for your, for coaches in that, 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 um, department is really important. But having that freedom for people to go out there and do their own thing and learn, I think is. Well, I think that's the, that's the, that's where the, that's how you and I learned. There, like it wasn't like somebody gave us a thing. They're like, you do it, like write your own shit, and then we'll see how it goes. And I was like, there's a lot to be gained by that. And I think to some to some degree, and I don't fault anybody for this because I don't think it was intentional. But there's a lot of resources out there, and I think it's fantastic. I don't want them to go away. However, I do think in some degree they have created deficiencies in coaching, which is like nobody's learning the skill sets because they're just being spoon fed to them. Again, I think they're great. There's a reason they exist out there. It saves box owners a lot of time. There's a ton of resources in there and that's great, but I don't want to overlook the actual process of developing it as a coach. You need to write your own lesson plan. You need to walk out there, take that plan, throw it in the trash. I want your lesson plan. What are you going to come up? Did you put any thought into what you would do to as a general warm up for the clean or the snatch or the ring muscle up? Did you put any thought into that at all? Because if this is the only thing that you have, well, then I know that your knowledge is exactly one piece of paper deep, mm. which is not very deep. I want you to have a whole bag of things back there, which is like, if that one doesn't work or it's not your plan, cool, pull out the one that you like that works for you, use that one. Mm -hmm. That's what I want people to have. And, and I get, think there's a lot of value to that. You get excited too. <clears throat> like if I was just to follow your handstand walk progression. You'd walk on your hands a lot faster. It'd be amazing. <laughs> We'd be in the Olympics. It would be a good progression. But I didn't watch Cole Paoli's videos, who, by the way, I, I mean, I learned all my gymnastics stuff right. from that guy. It was funny. You're not watching it. You're not like pausing it and being like, oh, what did he just say? Rewind. Right. Oh, man, he lunges back and then he lifts up his foot and then he leans forward and it's all the weight is in that one leg. And what a great scale. I'm going to try that. And I'm like, holy crap, that's hard. Maybe the members are going to struggle too. Maybe I'll put something down the side here so they right. can pull this. You don't go through that and... And you like know, I got my lesson plan. I'm like, you've put zero thought into that. Yeah. I'm like, this is, this is Jay's plan, not mine, but you get better and you start to think again, more critically about how you're going to scale the struggles members are going to have. But I will tell you when I, I feel like I passed a threshold as a coach when I was uh, given the role of programming. Tell me more. I'll tell you more. Geez. Please do. When I was programming, I got excited about putting workouts together and I used the level two sheet that, you know, the evaluation the, sheet, the evaluation yep. sheet. And I honestly, that's as simple as it ever needs to be. I mean, add a couple more things on, right. You've got some more funky stuff in your, your gym, but for those people that don't know what we're referring to, maybe I'm not taking a level two. Can you give them a little yeah. peek behind the curtain on what that is? It's, um, it's a, a worksheet and it's got a bunch of different boxes and it goes day one through day nine. And it starts with, like the uh, gymnastics and then lightweight lifting, medium, heavy. Then it goes into time and it breaks it up to like zero to five, so on and so on. It goes, you know, task time. There's reps in there. There's um, and you, you check all the characteristics you check of them the all, workout, yeah, yeah. And then and you, and hey, you get a burpee, yeah. um, you know, overhead squat. And you go across and at the end, there's a, a tally. And, you know, you'll be like, oh, I did 10 burpees this 
week, which would be horrible. A lot. Well, that would be a lot, you know. Or I, I did zero high skill gymnastics, or I did a lot of heavy lifting, but we didn't do any single, you know, modality work. Let's um, monostructural. Yeah, like a row two k. Yeah, and you're um, you're not just looking at this sheet and being like, oh, there's a zero. Let's put that in. Right. You actually look back at the workouts and you're like, okay, well, yeah, I did have a zero there, but. This workout was actually really close to that 20 minute, 15 to 20 minute period. So we've, we've got close to it, even though I have a it zero. Counts. Yeah, it's went. So you've got to do a little bit of work there, but it's like, oh, I guess we should probably do some high skill gymnastics next week. There you go. And you just start plugging it away. And, you know, when you get into the, the weeds of doing m- movement functions on certain days, mm. members start to see a pattern and, you know, we can have some kind of um, structure, but it can't be so structured that it's predictable. Right. And, you know, if you never come on a Wednesday, you're never <clears> going to do whatever that is for that day. Right. That was always the pitfall of, uh, yeah. you know, a uh, structured strength protocol, which is if you if I do, let's just say squat on Mondays, deadlift on Wednesdays, and then and then press on Fridays. Mm-hmm. Well, people that take Wednesday off just by pure chance they're not going to deadlift and yeah. they're missing out on a lot of benefit of that. Yeah, and it's okay to do do that stuff as well. Again, the overall effectiveness of the class has to be there if you're going to do some kind of lifting component or what insert X, whatever, gymnastic. Let's just make sure that we're varying things enough so that members that don't come on set days across the whole month, years, lifetime, they're going to be hitting this right. variance. That's why consistency in doing this thing over the long term is what we're after so we're not after getting strong in six weeks or 12 weeks like we can do that it works but if we just start to sprinkle in things over time one we can reduce injury because it's just we just don't have a lot of time in the the hour you know we i mean i'm sure the community is sick of hearing this right now well i think the simpler version of that is like linear progression works like if you're looking to build strength i think we just we for whatever reason we've got caught sticking it into 12 or 16 weeks. I'm like, you could use the same format, just stretch the calendar out because we're doing so many other things. If I do try to jam it in there, I'm going to do it at the expense of other things, or I'm not going to get to the outcome that I wanted by, by jamming it in such a a tight window. Because when those programs were designed, they were not designed to be done with a GPP program. They were designed to lift weights right? And get strong in that core group of lifts. So we have to take all that information and we have to use it again, context, which is like, why are you doing that? Could we do it better? Could we get the same result by stretching it out so that we could get a better blend across days, lifts, rep schemes, the members, like we could get a better result for everybody across there simply by just zooming out a little bit and applying a little context. We don't have to do it exactly like that, but I can take the principle that that's Mm -hmm. built on top of And then I can apply it that way. Like, it'll still work. Like, we've been doing that that way for years at CrossFit Rife. Like, we still use that general template. It's just zoomed out. Mm -hmm. And I think think it's okay to, excuse me, press the button. No, you're good. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. I got got excited. Okay. But I think it's okay to, this is the beauty of the affiliate is, hey, guys, in a month's time, we're going to do a strength cycle. And it's going to be great. But what that means is, we're going to back off a little bit on some Metcons. So we'll do something at the end, but the focus will not be on that specifically. We're going to dive a little deeper into strength. We're going to do it for a month, six weeks. Um, but I think when it's just this constant strength, 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 or, you know, monostructural, monostructural, whatever that is, we're missing the point a little bit. And, and one thing does fall by the wayside. So, you know, your members might get excited about that. It might be a lift that they need. You know, we can't really judge any one person's gym based on their programming just by taking a little chunk of it. Right. We got to look back. Yeah. And, it's, too, it's not fair. And how long have you been in business? What is your membership look like? Are your members um, primed for that kind of stuff? I mean, if you're new and you have new people, just do CrossFit. Right. Just, I mean, honestly for me, just do CrossFit all the time. All the but time. Just do, do CrossFit because they need, that's what they need. Um, and then, you know, when they get to a certain level, like maybe we will just sprinkle, but just make it make it appropriate right. for the hour, you know. But going back to what we were talking about before, I think you need to go through the trials and tribulations of like learning those things to have that context to do it. So I think yes. that's where I want people. The resources are great. 
sometimes I think you need to go it alone. I think you need to make those mistakes and learn those lessons and learn the why behind things in order to be like a true professional. Mm -hmm. Like you need to look at that and understand why something was built that way without putting a lot of thought to be like, oh, I see. I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. I know why you do that. I kind of generally understand what the outcome of this would be. That's that's a skill set. Yes. And that and that's what I'm saying. I, I became a better coach when I was given the privilege of, of programming. It is a privilege. It's a big responsibility because I was in charge of putting things together in a very, um, even though it's varied, mm-hmm. you know, it's not random, it's varied, but it's, there's a very clear path as to what we're doing. And then where I got better is that I got to create a lesson plan around that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, when I put this workout together, 21, 15, nine front squats, 115, 75, um, push press, I don't know, 400 meter run. Right. Here's, here's the expectation. I wanted them to be able to pick a weight that they want, they can go unbroken, but they don't want to. And they have to make the call, which is that 115, 75 pound barbell. Mm-hmm. That's the bar that does that. Are you going to hang on or are you going to drop it? Right. It's the gut check bar. Right. So that's and the then, Pat Sherwood, which is like, there's a difference between yes. somebody who puts the bar down because they want to and because they, or because they have to. Yeah. Cause the 135, 95, depending on the movement, it's got to go down. You know, actually, probably not in these days. We've got some beasts out yep. there, but that, one, you know, that 115.75, it's, yeah, it's a, a doozy. It's my whoopee bar. Your what bar? The whoopee bar. Like, that's the one I'm comfortable with. I'm like, I could do anything with this with the 115. I'm like, yeah. that, but I also know it's going to hurt. Yeah. I can hang on to that bar for a long time. Right. And so when I'm writing my lesson plan, I'm writing it with the stimulus in mind is like, hey guys, this is what I want you to tell them. This is the challenge today. Because that's the fun part too, is like all these workouts, we <clears> know are roughly like, hey, it should finish around this time, but that workout could be done Monday, right. right? And it could the challenge could be you're gonna pick a weight that you go unbroken on all the all the stuff. Right? You go seven you go twenty one front squats, twenty one push press. Pick a bar that you can do that. <gasps> then the next week or whenever next month, if we do it again, you can say, All right, you're gonna pick a bar now that you have to put it down. Yeah. Oh you if you do if you do this unbroken, you've you've done it wrong. You should do this in two to three sets. Something like that. Yeah. You know, whatever. It might not pan out, but yes, you, you know, you, you would give the guidelines that would, that would lend them to understand like, this is not the same workout. We're going to mm-hmm. change this slightly. The loading should be heavier. It's going to be a different stimulus. Or the bar is what it is, but now you, I need you to run a little quicker. You're going to run harder. Yeah. You're going to put emphasis on a different part exactly. of the workout, yeah, right? which is like, Hey, example. you're going to keep that break that up. But I want these runs, you know, if you're doing 400, like I want them sub 145. And now I go to the lesson plan, right? I've got my stimulus expectation. I'm excited about it. Now I'm going to be like, what kind of general warm up will get them primed to get on the front squat and get that bar overhead and do a little running. Okay. Well maybe I could do a little jog and maybe we do some like hip openers and some, maybe a couple of air squats, maybe some, um, you know, overhead stretches, whatever. You're thinking about it with purpose. And that's what we're trying to do, bring purpose. Or it could just be whatever, jumping jacks, yay. Then we go into the specific. And with the goal in mind is I want to get them to a point where they can do this weight unbroken. So how? what am I going to direct to them when I get them to build up the bar? All this is all purposeful. I need to give them a practice round. They need to understand what it's going to feel like. They're not going to want to do it. Nobody wants to do practice rounds. Right. But the warm up we did today was was brutal. I was like, they were doing what burpees for I don't know two minutes. Way too long. Way too long. Was, but everyone was ready to go. They were ready to go and they were warm. And now when they hit the run, you know, they're 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 well, they're, right. they're primed. We forget that about the warm up. Anyway, the point is, is that I'm excited about it and I'm thinking more on a deeper level. And then I'm able to answer questions from other coaches. And then I mess up workouts and they're not done well and the time's too short or the time's too long and I learn and I become a better coach in general, scaling, all that stuff. Now, if I at Reebok CrossFit 1, we went through a period of where I would coach at program three weeks mm-hmm. and every coach that. and it was so great and the coaches were so excited. Well, that's, that's where I was going to go with this. This is a way, so people always have a question about like, how do I develop my coaches? Mm-hmm. Well, you have to have a, a kind of a vehicle to do the development. There has to be something that would stimulate that conversation. This is it. Yeah. Like, hey, so this is what Cassidy's doing this at, at the gym now. He's like got some of the younger coaches in there. He's been writing program for a long time. But how do we help them develop? He's like, well, you guys are going to write some and then we're going to jam on it and we're going to talk about what the outcome is and why did you write that? Did you, okay, cool. You can write one workout which could be great, 
But in the context of this five days, mm-hmm. it's terrible. Mm-hmm. So let's think about like broader spectrum. What are we doing with all of that? But this is a great means of doing that is again, you've got this resource, right? Use it. That's fine. But don't be afraid to deviate. You can, there's a lot of value from deviating that both in just making it more appropriate for your affiliate, but also in prompting these conversations and these topics of discussion that would lead to development, but to, to get people to the why to, to have some, I don't know, let's say struggle sessions, but to have some disagreements on it, but like I disagree on doing that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's, that's, that's where the sweet stuff is. Like, I think that's a dumb work. And I'm like, well, let's find out, like, let's try it. Like, yeah. why did you make that? Like, and we're going to find out, like, we're going to execute it. And then we can talk about what the outcome and was. And they always surprise you. <clears throat> and you know, Connor Murphy, right? He's quiet, you know, doesn't yeah, he's, like, uh, doesn't he's, like being, he's not a social, he's animal. not a social, but Connor's workouts, I would look at it and it'd be like, I, I don't even know how this looks. Like, I was like, what is this? What, how do make? we even logistically do this? Yeah. And every time we would do his workouts, they were so, they were so fun and right. so great and different right. to like how Austin programmed and how I programmed. Like, we was like very classic CrossFit and Connor always liked to get a little more creative and the members got excited for that too. That's the key. Because who's it about? Right. It's about them. It's because about, it's fun. It's about them. You know, I have to be careful when I say who's it about. It's not, we're not trying to just satisfy everything they need, but. When we say it's about them, we're talking about their experience, not doing what yes. they want. And then Pete would, you know, do his way. And the members always knew when, you know, Connor was programming or Austin was, right. you know, or whatever. And they, and they get excited for this new evolution of programming. But. Everybody always looked back on what the other coaches did. Right. They didn't just start from zero and be like, well, this is my three weeks. Screw you guys. You I know? tell you what, we, when I was in Iraq in 2009, um, myself and a, a guy by the name of Nick Maddox, he's a longtime CrossFitter. Um, we did that and we would literally alternate days and he would write workouts. I was like, this is dumb. I don't want to do this. But everybody loved it. Certain people gravitated to those workouts and we would do certain things. I'm like, I don't, I'm not really digging this and we would do it. But that variance that I would have never done led to a lot of buy-in from the members. Mm-hmm. And it also led to a lot of learning that I learned that, hey, it doesn't always need to be about what I like. And also the question was like, why don't I like that? Yes. Yeah, because I think it's dumb or I think it's ineffective. And that's also not true in some of those mm-hmm. scenarios. So I think the big takeaway for this whole thing is like, Put, put more intent behind everything that you do. Put more intent behind your programming. Put more intent behind when you look at movement. Like, what are you looking for? Why are you standing here? What is your purpose? All of that stuff. When you're running the workout, what's the intent? When you're having a conversation, giving feedback, what is the intent? Mm-hmm. And I think if we focus more on the intent, I think the outcomes will improve. It, yeah, an intent on your communication. Mm-hmm. Like, everything you do has to be with the goal in mind. Right. I'm not here to tell you guys, you, what your goals are. I mean, you should have a gym goal of increasing your fitness, but that has to be communicated. Right. Because otherwise, it's it's like saying, hey, I'm going to have you go outside now and you're going to count birds. And you don't know what a bird looks like. And or, there's birds or, everywhere. And or why we're counting birds. Oh, we're counting birds. <laughs> and you come in, you're like, or I see any birds. birds. <laughs> right. And I'd be like, Jay, I just saw five. And you're like, oh, that's a bird. That's a bird. That's the same thing right. for your, your team. Like, they need to be bought into the why, and um, and the and sometimes that changes. Yeah. But if it changes, you can't just assume everyone else is going to be in. So I think that's great intentionality in, in what you're doing. It brings just more enthusiasm and passion and excitement too. And ultimately, that's the best coach, right? The person that's just continuously excited to learn, to um, have their blockers removed, have their blind spots exposed, get better, be, have service to others, and um, and just continue to to um, give people the best hour of the day. And that's the whole goal. I mean, so you know where we discuss a lot of these things at the affiliate summit. So if you have an affiliate oh. summit coming near you, you should probably hop in on that. Um, but I'm glad you stuck around. We do want to get uh, Brian out of here because he does, he wants to close this. He wants to close this place, but thanks to ASDC for hosting um, again. No, but all, in all seriousness, guys, if you have a summit near you, you should go um, there. I've done quite a few of these at this point you have as well. Um, they're really, really fun. There's a lot of really good discussion. There's a lot of learning. Um, and, uh, it's just a good way to get back in touch with the community. You know? mm-hmm. So, um, Denise and I may see you at a level one or level two at some time in the near future. If so, um, 
I'm sorry. Denise won't be able to hold the timeline, but we'll talk about that later. Um, I'm just so yeah. trying to show you what not to do so that you can be better. There you go. It's yeah. all done with intention. <laughs> Thanks, boss. Thanks for checking out this episode of the Best Hour of Their Day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you in your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms, or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.